Hi YouTube, this is Brian with you once again on my Path to Paphos channel and uh, thank you very much for joining me. We've got over 500 subscribers now and I'm really pleased to see you all on here. Thank you very much. Now before I go on with this, uh, this video is um, a follow-up to the I Quit, I Quit the UK video which you'll see there's a link above there. Um, but before I do anything, this is just a personal opinion. This is my personal opinion. It's not meant to influence you. It's not meant to get you to change your views or agree or disagree with me. This is just purely how I feel. And one thing it's certainly not meant to do is to incite anything in people. Please have your own opinions. These are my personal opinions and they are not meant to guide you in any way. They're not meant to incite you in any way. You choose your own path. But this is, uh, as I say, a bit of a follow-up. And I feel lied to, and I'll tell you for why. Um, and it's part of the reason I want to get at the UK as well, because I feel that most of my life has been a collection of lies coming towards me from my government, from the British media, and by the propaganda that we get. As I've said in previous videos, I spent over 45 years in military uniform in the RAF, the Royal Air Force, as a cadet originally, then as a regular serviceman, then as a reserve serviceman, and then as a volunteer reservist. That's a long time to spend in uniform in service of your country, and I'm very proud of it. I, I went into there with my, with my eyes as open as I could, and I'm very proud of the service I gave. I'm very proud of the, the, um, the dedication I put into it. I'm proud to have been part of a great organisation, and I'm proud to have left a good legacy. However, I feel as if my government and my media, and my civil service, and my country has lied to me. Let me explain why. During the mid-70s, when I first got into a, an RAF uniform, and for the whole time that I was in military service, until about 2000, uh, well, sorry, about uh, about 1991, I think it was, when the, uh, the disillusion of the Soviet Union, the breaking down of the Berlin Wall, all that sort of thing, We'd been told how the people in the East, the Eastern Europeans under the USSR were evil. We'd been told about the, how bad they were, how people were kept in such repressed style, how people were undereducated, how we were superior to them, how we had the, uh, the, the moral high ground over everything that they were doing. And I believed it because I had no other reference. I was in the middle of the Cold War. I was in a military service during the height of the Cold War. We'd all seen the, uh, the things in earlier times. Um, for, as a child for me, obviously, we had um, the, the Cuban Missile Crisis. But also going on, we had Able Archer in the 1980s, which I was on that exercise. I was, I was part of the exercise Able Archer, which very nearly brought us to a Third World War, a nuclear Armageddon at that point. And we were fed, either by the authorities or by the media, a whole load of stories about how bad it was out east and how good we were. Now, don't get me wrong. There was bad on all sides. There were some horrific things happening in the Eastern European blocs. I don't defend it at all and I don't defend anything which um, was done in a bad way at all there was her some horrendous things many people met their deaths many people met incredibly bad circumstances but we also have bad circumstances in the western Europe side and America we had some of our soldiers and airmen and sailors who were put through unbelievable things on things like Christmas Island in the 1950s during the nuclear missile tests that we were running, where they were put through some incredibly debilitating and death-creating things. Not straight away at the time, we didn't blow people up, but we got into the point where, again, from my research, so if it's wrong, I admit it's wrong, but my research tells me opposite, there are people who are still alive today who've had some debilitating cancers, some serious problems, leukemias, all sorts of things, because of the nuclear radiation which was put out at that time during those tests. And not only that, it was covered up for a long time. 
The West seems to cover an awful lot up. But I was fed a lie. I was fed this lie that we were so superior and the Eastern Bloc was so inferior. We were told that they were just after a land grab. We were told that they would invade us at any time if we put our guard down for a moment. But we wouldn't do that. And then, of course, we went through things like the Gulf War, which I think Gulf War I was an abomination. And again, it's a personal uh, opinion on this. It's, I'm not saying what the, the situation is, but I believe that that war was corrupt and I believe that war was illegal. Um, and we were led into it. We've had all sorts of things since. But I'm seeing it more and more that we are being lied to the whole time. And the big change for me was when I started meeting some of these people who were my sworn enemy. These people who were Eastern Bloc people, Hungarians, Czechoslovakians, Bulgarians, Georgians, all these people, Ukrainians, they were the enemy. They were my sworn enemy during that time. And then I realised that some of them were just normal people like me. Some of them had had perfectly normal lives. Some of them had had some really good lives. Well, instead of them being ill-educated, I found an awful lot of them to be highly educated. Instead of being devout communists and all, you know, all the bad parts, I actually found them to be intriguing in their conversational level, intriguing in, in their intellect, intriguing in their intelligence. And over the past... 30 years or so, maybe a little bit more since the Berlin Wall came down and I've had the opportunity to travel abroad and meet some of these people. I've realised that maybe I'd been lied to and maybe they'd been lied to by their governments too. So these people who were my sworn enemies became friends. Confidence almost. Confidence is about life, not about anything untoward. Don't get me wrong, I, I don't discuss what I did in my military service with them, and they don't do it to me either. But confidence insofar as sharing emotions, sharing friendships, being able to have an intellectual or an intelligent conversation with somebody. I now have people from all over the former Soviet Union as friends, as colleagues, I have friends from all over the western side of Europe and America who are friends and colleagues. But I do feel bitter. I do feel lied to. Does that mean that I wouldn't serve my country again if I was asked to? No, it doesn't. I'd quite happily serve my country if, the, if I was asked to because I have a belief in my country. Now that I've got two countries, I have a belief in both Ireland and the UK. And when I go across to Cyprus, then I'll have a belief in supporting Cyprus too, as my adopted country. I wouldn't do anything against those countries. They've given me everything in life up to now, especially the UK. But it's came with a price tag. It's came with a price tag towards my integrity. It's came with a price tag against my beliefs. It's came as a pri with a price tag against my understanding of honesty. So when I'm saying about going out of the UK, that's part of it. I've been lied to. I've been lied to also where my um, my tax pound, or my tax dollar as the Americans call it, my tax pound has gone to. A lot of it has been squandered. A lot of it has gone into personal pockets rather than necessarily the things which I believed it was going to be going into, which was the betterment of my society. I can't prove most of that. But I don't need to. It's my opinion. It's my belief that that's happened. And if my belief is there, then it takes something to change that belief. Not just tell me I'm wrong. I don't believe in just being told I'm wrong. So if you're going to leave comments below, and please do feel free to. Try and make them positive. If you have a different view, a different opinion, please put it down. I have no problem about other people's opinions, other people's ideas, other people's beliefs. But don't tell me I'm wrong in mine, because they are my beliefs, they are my opinions. But I do feel that now 
after 63 years of living in the UK, after 63 years of being fed one set of propaganda, and now coming to the conclusion that that propaganda was a lie. It's now time to move on. And I feel that I'd rather move on to somewhere like Cyprus, where I have more trust in the people around me, where I have more belief in the people around me, where we are living in a very multicultural uh, population. Not the way that the UK says multicultural. Multicultural in the UK tends to be little pockets of various cultures which never meet, which never integrate, which never work together or rarely work together. Whereas when I go to Cyprus, I find what I consider multicultural. You've got people of all sorts of backgrounds getting together, but under a single Cypriot culture, but retaining their own beliefs and their own way of working, but working closely together and integrating. So let me know what you think below. If you haven't subscribed to this, please hit the subscribe button below, ring the little bell and tick the all to uh, get updates whenever I post anything new on this. And also give me a big thumbs up if you would, that really does help the channel. I'm trying to build this channel up so that I can be monetized to help me afford to live in Cyprus. Um, so I can bring you all the great sort of videos I've got lined up when I finally get there. Because at the moment you see that the channel is called Path to Paphos. I'm still on that path. I haven't arrived there yet. But once I get to Paphos, we're going to find out all the beauty and all the fantastic things that Cyprus has to offer. And I'm going to be showing you and sharing them on the video. Also, if you'd like to give a little bit of financial help before I get monetized, you can buy me a coffee. There's a link below to buyacoffee.com and that would be really, really uh, appreciated. However, thanks very much for sharing this. As I say, please try and keep the comments positive. I will delete comments which are just um, uh, uh, caustic, which are nasty, which are horrible. I want positive comments. I want constructive comments. I'm open to criticism, but I don't need abuse. So until the next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.